、はい、わずかな時間切れのほんのちょっとした隙をまずポイントしました、はい、やっぱりこれはさすがにやっぱりベテランだと思います田中の逆襲ですね逆襲ですはい鮮やかでしたこれで田中選手世界選手権見事2連勝ですそして日本は6種目全部の優勝を成し遂げました You've just become the world champion for the second straight time. How do you feel? All I can say is I feel really happy, mainly because all the competitors I fought against were all really big. In the first round, I fought against Bruno. He came in second, and I've been wanting to beat him for a long time. Anyway, once I defeated him in the first round, that set the pace for the rest of the tournament. It's early September, and the All Japan Karate Championships are close at hand. At the main dojo of the Japan Karate Association, those of the instructor's class intending to participate in the meet have gathered here, time and strength permitting, from all parts of Japan. In order to put the last finishing touches on their ever-continuous tests, they're devoting themselves to daily training sessions. I've known Tanaka-sensei since I started university. I met him first when I entered the karate club of the veterinary medicine school of Nihon University. And once a week he'd come to teach us, and that's how I got to know him. It was in my very first year of university. My very first impression of him was one of a fearfulness that's impossible to put into words. It wasn't in the way he spoke or in his expression, but instead was a fearfulness that came forth from within his whole being, even from far away. Just strong, really strong, an incredible strength no matter what. <laughs> I could never outdo him. Even today, I can't outdo him. His technique? Mm, Tanaka's kick is his best technique. Concentrating on that kick itself, I intend to learn more from Tanaka's techniques in many ways.
Masahiko Tanaka will not be taking part as a competitor in this meet, but the zeal with which he follows the kumite is still one which exceeds that of the younger competitors. There's a grimness that only a former continuous world champion can hold, because, as head of the foreign instructors, he has pushed himself to the limits, and even now continues to do so. The 23rd and 24th of September. At long last, the All Japan Karate Championships are before us. Now is the time for the results of a year's training to be put to the test. Kumite and Waza matches, both individual and group, are to take place at the championships. Masahiko Tanaka, in his role as referee, watches closely the development of the young men and women aiming to make their mark in the world. In Kumite matches, the Sundame rule is held, but shattering forces are brought to such extremes that injuries occur one after the other. There's a fierceness that will not allow for presupposition even for one moment, as bodies that have been forged into weapons meet in an exchange of well-trained waza. Hontoga. I'd read about him in magazines, and a lot of my seniors trained at JKA, so I'd heard a lot about him from them as well. And the first time I met him was when I graduated from Takushoku University. That year, we'd had quite a few victories, and I met him at a celebration party. When you face Tanaka Sensei in a match, you find that every opportunity for an attack is blocked. It gives you the feeling that there are no unguarded moments at all. He's quite open and frank. Seems very down to earth.
As for his matches, well, the one that left the strongest impression on me is the World Championships in Bremen. In the finals, in the last decisive moments of the match, he used a front kick to the midsection, his finest technique. It's pretty hard to put your best technique to use during the tense atmosphere of a major tournament, but he doesn't let himself be bothered by that atmosphere. Once more, he took advantage of a rare opportunity in that two-minute match and at precisely that moment was able to apply his best technique. Oh, I was astonished by it. His karate is strong. He's got strikes and kicks that are powerful enough to knock down anyone with a single blow. I'd like to have just a fraction of the strength that he's got. The fifth individual Kumite match is over. And at last, the best four are left undefeated. Drawing to the conclusion of the championships, only the final three matches, the semi-finals, remain. match will have these two pitted against each other. The up-and-coming Tomio Imamura and Hideo Yamamoto who, because of the explosive power his small stature contains, is known as the pocket atom. In 1973, by winning the championship at the International Karate Championships in Kyushu, a major turning point took place in Masahiko Tanaka's karate career. You are the strongest there is now. Do you understand just what that means? With these words his seniors advised him, he made the decision to quit his job and devote himself to winning in karate. His aim was for sure and certain victory. With this turning point, he left the days of wildly rushing, extravagant matches behind him. In the last part of the match, by thoroughly reading the opponent's movements, it's possible, in the last 30 seconds, to summon up total concentration of spirit in order to find that unguarded moment and complete the perfect waza. The amount of power is far too great to let loose in a match. Holding back the too dangerous roundhouse kick to the face, a powerful roundhouse kick to the midsection is let loose. Accumulated together is the experience acquired from countless actual bouts 
as well as effort unseen by others into this unshowy, not too easy to determine Waza. A Waza so deadly that it's become his strongest forte. In 1974, he gained his first victory in the 17th All Japan Karate Championships. And since then, by winning these championships three times in a row, as well as the World Karate Championships twice, he reaches heights no man has ever reached before. Let's hear some explanations of the basis of the deadly waza that has shaken the world. First, from the great master Masatoshi Nakayama. The skillfulness of his combination of kicks and blows brings him victory in countless competitions. Because it's a technique with profound psychological effect on the opponent, it's one reason why his opponent fears him. In particular, when it comes to foreign karateka, an attack from below is very threatening. If not enough force is put into the kick, with the aid of their build, they can brazenly attack from above. A quick kick and blow combination renders useless the unnecessary force expelled by the opponent. When he uses his kick waza, an extremely important point is the firm tenseness of the ankles on both the kicking leg and the supporting leg. If the kicking leg ankle is not tensed firmly, the effect of the kick will be lost. In order to give a powerful kick with the hips thrust strongly forward, the supporting leg must be firmly pressing the floor and a strong snap applied with the ankle. The way Masahiko Tanaka uses his ankles is truly wonderful. One of Masahiko Tanaka's strongest waza is the front kick waza from a position with the feet firmly planted on the floor. In the second World Karate Championships, he was able to gain a beautiful victory using this waza when he fought against Yugoslavia's talented Jorga. One of the key points is the way he changes step at the same time the hips are shifted, or, in other words, the shifting of the hips leading to a change in step. Another key point is that even if the front leg is withdrawn, without shifting the hips, the knee is raised high and the kicking snap is applied firmly. By withdrawing the front leg, the opponent's attacking Ma'ai is thrown off. And by shifting the hips, Go No Sen is possible. A blow brought around immediately after the kick dismantles the opponent's offense. Put another way, it becomes possible to make a strike at a deadly angle.
This technique is particularly effective during those parts of the bout which occur close to the edge of the mat. Masahiko Tanaka's strongest waza is this Mai Kazami Geri with the front leg. In the individual Kumite finals at the second World Karate Championships, this waza was used to determine his victory over the veteran from West Germany. One important point about this was is that when kicking, the hips are not pulled in. Or in other words, it is important that one's height does not change when one is driving in the kick towards the opponent. Therefore, it is necessary to bring the knee up high and close to the chest. If the knee is not brought up high enough, the essential snap to the kick is lost. The kick becomes weak and its line of attack is poorly made. This technique is not visibly large. Therefore, at the moment of the kick's impact, it is essential that the hips are also thrust forward. To increase the strength of the kick and gain a point, this is necessary. Next, let's get an explanation of the waza from Masahiko Tanaka himself by watching a training session. This is Imamura, who won second place in the last championship. Now, what he must do is, with an attack from a low position as his purpose, practice in finding that brief unguarded moment which occurs when the opponent is changing position. <laughs> Keep in mind that there is always at least one time in each match when your opponent will change position. Do not let that opportunity go by. In Masahiko Tanaka's case, he always plants a kick. Now, 
let's look closely at one aspect of this deadly waza, Masahiko Tanaka's strongest forte. This is the front leg roundhouse kick achieved while constantly changing position. Before your opponent has even finished his kick, the movements in preparation for your kick must be completed. He makes the most of his natural resiliency and the techniques brought about by countless well thought out devices and diligent efforts. Even today, his talents never seem to weaken. What sort of a man is this who, as an active karateka or as an international instructor, has literally devoted himself, body and soul, to karate? Let's hear what those who've known him from his brown belt days, his major opponent Ida, and the chief instructors at JKA's main branch have to say about Masahiko Tanaka, the Karateka. Tanaka-senpai's Tanaka first victory was in July 1973 at the World Karate Championships held in honor of the 50th anniversary of Funakoshi Sensei in Kyushu. Tanaka was 31 or 32 at the time, I think. I fought against him in the finals, so I remember it very well. I remember that the match was extended, then extended again, and I was defeated in a sudden draw. Even to this day, I can recall everything. With a slight tear in his eye, Tanaka Senpei said to me, Ida, it's my first win, you know. I can still remember him saying that. Every match must be won, he'd say. And true to those words, he was never defeated. He became the world champion twice in a row, kept on winning, and was still active when he retired. After his first victory at Kyushu, I fought against him for three consecutive years, and three times I was defeated. Of those, two were final matches, and each time I lost at a critical moment. We've both won against each other during that period when our standings were not so high, but when it came to the major events, I knew that I was no match against the results of his diligent training. Tanaka Senpai possesses that all-important spring in his movements. What's more, he absolutely hates the thought of losing. Naturally, in karate, no one likes the thought of losing, but his is an incredibly strong willpower. 
which is why, from the way he carries himself in matches and the way he trains himself, you can see that rather than from the aspect of physical skill, he's fighting with his whole mental being. There are cases when I fight against someone and I'm held back by a skillful series of rapid kicks and strikes, which are a result of extensive training and techniques. Yeah, I don't feel I'm being fought mentally. But when I practice with Tanaka Senpai or fight against him in a match, I can feel the large amount of mental pressure he uses against his opponent. You could say he is challenging you with his spirit. Before he even uses his techniques, he begins the match with his spiritual strength. This mental pressure is unbelievably powerful. Something from within him keeps you back, pushing, pushing. Just like a frog becomes mesmerized by a snake. And just when you've been driven into a mental corner, the kicks and blows start coming at you, and you know you're in for it. You feel this very strongly when you fight against him. If you were to make a comment about him, one word you'd probably have to use is fearful. And also, you'd have to say just how strong he is in a fight. He never gives in. It's a confidence that comes from the amount of time he puts into training himself. More time than anyone else. At the World Championships in Bremen, with a mere two seconds remaining, he was able to score a point that reversed the match. And during their finals at the World Championships in Tokyo, he lost a point to his opponent, but in the last 10 seconds was able to even it up and won in the extended time. He just never gives up. Until the very last moment, he's confident that he'll win. He's the kind of karateka that has confidence that's both mental and physical. As head of the international division, Masahiko Tanaka is an instructor in foreign countries. His activities have taken him to all corners of the earth, to Europe, America, the Caribbean, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. The responsibilities that go with this job are enormous, for there is a heavy obligation to the karate of the future. Now let's hear from the foreign karateka and other instructors about their impressions of Masahiko Tanaka as an instructor. Tanaka Sensei has been very instrumental in uh, helping foreigners when they come to Japan uh, if their main purpose involves the study of karate. He, uh, I believe that he thinks that by helping uh, raise the level of technique uh, in foreign countries, he will therefore give more challenge to the Japanese to improve themselves. Within the dojo uh, training, uh, yes, I have, and uh, it's a very uh, unique experience. Uh, I think we've learned the Buddha way from Tanaka Sensei. He's he always reminds me of a man that should have lived maybe a hundred years ago. He has that samurai spirit and attitude to life. And I think this is rubbed off on a lot of the Westerners who believe in this sort of idea. Uh, that, I think, is a thing that cannot be described in words. I have learned, he makes me enthusiastic. He sets an example for me, and I like what he does. And he's put enthusiasm into me. And I believe that the word enthusiastic is an important word. I would like to actually expand on that. Enthi enthusiastic comes from the word en theos, means in God. So in other words, his spirit is like a godly spirit. In other words, he's imparting that and there's nothing better than you can give a person than enthusiasm. Because that encourages humanity, that builds the whole of our society. Anything opposite to enthusiasm, like the word, like indifference, collapsing and all that kind of thing, is the opposite. That is destruction. Any negativities in life, enthusiasm, if a teacher can bring that, he's going to build a big association and contribute. I believe he has got that quality. That's what he's given to me.
We're running the International Association IAKF and held our first competition in Los Angeles. I was a director at the time. Naturally, Tanaka became champion then. But at that time, there was no one with a very high degree of skill from among the karateka of other countries. So you could say that the Japanese competitors did just as they wanted in matches that seemed to be carried on according to the prescribed embu form. Anyway, it resulted in an easy victory for the Japanese. This definitely was not the case, however, at the second world championships held at the Budokan in Tokyo. This time, the international competitors came well prepared and uh, the tournament was quite a challenge, especially in the finals where it was a seesaw match all the way with points being scored and then lost and scored, lost over and over again in a fight that had the competitors pushing themselves as far as humans can possibly go. Well, that was my impression that day. I think that uh, in times like that, uh, during a match, that's where the results of your daily training and seriousness with which you approach a fighter show. You often hear of the established formula, spirit, technique and the body. Putting this formula into full play is where the amount of training you've done and the way you've trained become also important. Also important, I think, is the way you demonstrate how that precept that's been mastered mentally, and this is something that Tanaka accomplished. Naturally, we and all who were watching at the Budokan that day were deeply impressed. And now, here he is in his mid-forties, and uh, he can still move that way. He still has those movements. He's someone who has surpassed the limits usually set down by age. And from among those practicing karate in Japan, there is no one else that I know of that can do this. It's something that I'd like every young person to learn from. He's trained himself with diligence, repetitive training that's extremely valuable, and uh, this should be taken as an example by all. It's not just the passion he feels for karate, and it, uh, it goes beyond fine techniques. Both physically and mentally, he can do a lot for us, developing new ways and educating others. He has the ability to see the future in modern martial arts, and uh, we know he'll be able to come up with new developments that will further his recognition. He's shown us, and those under him, that even when you're in your 40s or 50s, it is possible to keep on practicing karate and never lose your skills. He himself has taken the initiative in showing us this, and for that we are grateful.
Karate, as perfected by Masahiko Tanaka, goes beyond the barriers usually accompanied by age. Even at an advanced age, he's certain to achieve victories. He's a man proud to be a karateka, and one confident enough to be victorious over other champions if he should enter future tournaments. Lastly, let's watch him take on four times the difficulty as he challenges four young opponents at once. The great master, Masatoshi Nakayama, points out the highlights of this match. First, the Waza's total kick and thrust technique was determined from the start by the position the hips were in when the starting stance was taken. Keeping the body level at all times, the position of the hips when thrusting forward makes it possible to apply kicks and blows freely, easily executed whether to the front or rear. Furthermore, the supporting leg is firmly positioned on the floor. It's a rather impossible position to assume when considered from a psychological viewpoint. Second, the combination of blows and kicks are magnificent. Third, the center of gravity is kept low and stable. In particular, during Mai Kizami Geri, while lowering the hips, he raises the knee up high and close. Fourth, the movement of the feet and the shifting of the hips are beautiful. Fifth, we must watch closely the way he depreciates his opponent's waza. The art with which he depreciates the mai of the attacks of his opponent is something worthy of anyone called an expert. Last, I'd like to draw attention to the position of his body the instant his waza is finished. The moment it's attained, his body flies from that position. Most important is the way he moves to avoid his opponent's attack, a technique which allows him, in a dead serious match, and in particular in international competition, to go on to win without injury. Exposing one's body to unnecessary danger is one of the gravest points in a match. Right here, one can see the severity required to gain a certain victory.
Karate Do is lifetime Budo through a training based on three principles basic form, kata, and kumite, by which obstacles, both tangible and intangible, are overcome, with the ultimate goal being discipline of the mind and body. Contests are but one of the steps toward the ultimate goal of Karate Do as lifetime Budo. Contests should never become one's main purpose.